it's snowing outside again. We only really get a week of snow, so this is fine. It's fine. I moved here to get away from the snow. You see, I grew up in Regina, Saskatchewan. Experience Regina. It snows there for like six months, so one week of this, I can survive. I can do it. I can manage it. Mostly that means that we're going to be filming inside today. Also, I'm going to be watching this hill right here. I think that's it right there. Because cars go up and down it and it gets really icy. Like people make fun of Vancouver for falling apart when it gets snowy, but like the city's built on the side of a small mountain. When it snows, everything turns to ice and no one has winter tires, so everyone just slides everywhere. All right, so if you're new to the channel, my name is Ben Schubert, I'm a filmmaker, and a big part of this channel is to help creatives learn more of the technical side of this craft. So a couple weeks ago, we were talking about shooting on C-Log and why that is a better way of shooting than using, say, a standard picture profile or even a neutral picture profile. You know, C-Log, it gives you a flatter image to work with and it helps to retain your highlights and not get too much noise in the shadows. So we're talking about shooting on C-Log, and today we're gonna to be talking about grading C-Log, and especially grading C-Log in a hurry. I know some other shooters, not gonna mention any names, Mike Zimmer, who shoot on standard picture profiles or neutral picture profiles because it's just an easier thing to use in post. So today we're gonna to be looking at some fast ways you can grade in Premiere Pro so you can get your project turned around quickly. So when you're looking at fast ways of grading your footage, there's kind of two areas you need to look at. One is using LUTs, and two is just coming up with a grade that's specific for your look. Now the main benefit of using a LUT is if you know that it works and you know it's gonna look good with your footage, you can just pick it from a list and apply it to your footage and call it a day. Now this works particularly well if you're shooting on a monitor that has LUT support and you can actually film and expose for that LUT while you're shooting. Now I know that isn't gonna be the case for a lot of people. You're gonna be shooting on a camera that doesn't have LUT support or doesn't have view assist or something like that. So you're gonna be seeing the flat image as it is and then you're gonna to have to grade it afterwards. So you should be able to go to the manufacturer of your camera and find LUT support there. So these are technical LUTs, which you can use to convert your log footage, which is flat, into a more contrasty Rec. 709 image. And so for this, I'm gonna be using one of the Canon C-Log LUTs and applying it to my footage that way. Now, I recommend having LUTs pre-installed into Premiere Pro before you start editing. It's good to just have them on hand in case you need them, as opposed to try and hunt them down for when you're wanting to have them. So to pre-install LUTs into Premiere Pro, first you have to download the LUTs from wherever you're getting them from, whether that's Canon or Sony or from some third-party provider. I'm a Mac user, so this is mostly gonna be for Mac. I know that's a lot to keep in mind, but it's like using fonts. You need to have the fonts pre-installed into your fonts folder before you can use them. And LUTs work the same way. You need to take the LUTs and put them into the right folder before you can have access to them in Premiere. Now, once you have those pre-installed into Premiere Pro, you can easily find them in the drop-down menu and apply them as necessary. But one thing to keep in mind with LUTs is just because you use a LUT doesn't mean it's gonna look great. You're still gonna need to do some tweaks afterwards to fine tune it and make it look good for your project. Now the other option, which I recommend more, is to actually use Lumetri to come up with a grade for your footage. Now what this means if you're trying to do this quickly is you're gonna pick a point in your footage which is the most average looking part of your footage. You're gonna grade that and you're gonna apply it to everything. This way you can get the white balance and contrast to look the way you want it to look. And this is often generally faster because you can put it in, move a couple things quickly, and then you're done. And so that's where we come up with this big question of, are we just gonna apply a lot quickly or are we gonna grade this ourselves? Either have their drawbacks, because one you actually have to grade yourself, and the other you're just picking from a drop down menu, but you have to have that uh, pre-organized. So now that you have that information, you have three choices ahead of you if you wanna grade quickly. So one thing I like to do at the end of the day, if I'm not gonna be editing right away, if I'm gonna be editing, say, the next day, I will copy my footage over to a drive, uh, that way it's backed up, but then I will also bring it into Premiere Pro and start transcoding it. And so what this does is it gives you a better codec to work with, which will make editing faster. 
And so while you're transcoding, one thing that you can actually do in encoder is you can apply a LUT directly to it. Now, when you're setting up your settings for your transcoding, you can apply a LUT directly here. So this is a great way to shoot with flat footage like log or CineStyle, and then at the end, be able to export quickly. Now, I generally recommend this because I don't find that MP4s are that efficient for editing. For quick turnaround projects where I'm not gonna be doing a ton, that's fine, but if I have to do any kind of scrubbing, it's way faster to scrub through uh, ProRes files than it is through MP4s. So once the LUT is applied to the footage that you're transcoding, once you're done your edit, you can export and you're fine. So the second way to color grading quickly is to just apply a color grade to a master clip. Now I don't generally recommend using this method, but what it works really well for is say you're making a video out of say a single clip and you're chopping it up into smaller pieces and you want it to have the same look and be consistent throughout. And so for this, what you do is you bring your clip into your timeline, you go into color and you hit master. And so from here, every adjustment you do is gonna affect the actual clip. So you can delete the clip, bring it back in, and it's gonna look the same. So what this allows you to do is you can grade your clip as a whole and then edit it up and then have it all have a consistent look throughout. You can still go make individual adjustments to each clip, but the master will have this applied to it as a whole. Now third, lastly, this is the method that I recommend the most, and this is using adjustment layers. So what you can do is you right click on your project and you can say create new and pick adjustment layer. You can then choose the settings that match the project that you're exporting and apply it there. You then drag the adjustment layer over top of your footage and whatever you put into the adjustment layer is gonna affect everything underneath it. And so if you're editing multiple clips of multiple different kind of scenarios, you can have a very similar grade across the whole thing. So if you're really just adding sharpening and contrast, that's a really great way to apply everything as a whole and have a consistent look throughout. It's kind of like using a LUT on everything, but you can control what's happening there. And then you can go to each clip and adjust it if that's what you're looking to do. And so there you go. Those are three ways of color grading that are quick and easy and will help you uh, get your projects done faster and also allow you to use the flexibility of C-Log or log footage or CineStyle or whatever flat profile you're using. So I hope this video has helped you. If it has, hit the like button. Uh, if you want to see more tutorials like this or just follow the weird films that I'm making, you can hit that subscribe button. If you have any ideas of how you can use these methods in other editing platforms, you can leave those in the comments below. It'd be greatly appreciated for me and anyone else who's watching this video. Uh, but before we go, let's try and get a hold of Mike Zimmer and see what he thinks about color grading now. How's it going, Mike? I just finished filming that uh, video where I throw you under the bus. <laughs> Are you recording this? Oh, yeah. Okay, you should have said, I'm recording this very much. So first of all, tell me about why you chose to do uh, shoot and standard picture profile. I would say uh, because of a lack of understanding in color grading and laziness. Laziness was the answer I was looking for. If you had some simple ways of doing it, like of color grading and getting that out that are fast and easy. You would shoot with like a flat, flatter picture profile more often when you're editing. Yeah, yeah, like when, yeah, yeah, when yeah. you did the... Yeah, totally. Like I know you shoot like flat for other people, right? When you're not the one who has to be bothered with it. Yeah. Yeah, but then when I have to be bothered with it, then I'm like, nah, I'm fine. It'll yeah. be fine, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, totally. And you're not like, I'm pretty sure you're not alone in that, right? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So this video is for you. <laughs>